Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Now this is the second part of the series Must Have Unraid Plugins and today we're going to be looking at the excellent Dynamics family of plugins. So let's get started. So here we are on the second part of the video series, Must Have Unraid Plugins. And in this part, we'll be focusing on the Dynamics family of plugins, written by Bergware, aka Bonnie NL. Now this is the same guy who makes the Dynamics Enhanced Web UI for Unraid, so you can expect good things. And we're going to be looking at eight of his plugins. Firstly, the Trim plugin to keep your SSD healthy. The Cache Directories plugin to save drives spinning up when browsing directories. The Active Streams plugin to see any active streams and open files that you have on your shares. And the Sleep plugin to put your server to sleep and save on power bills. The System Temperature plugin to monitor your server's temperatures. The Date and Time plugin to add a nice world map to select your time zone. The System Info plugin to see detailed information about your server's hardware. And lastly, the System Stats plugin to see both real time and historical statistics for your server. Right, so if you watch the first part of this video series, you'll remember that the Fix Common Problems plugin suggested that this plugin be installed as I had an SSD. So we'll start from there. So why do we need the Trim plugin if we have an SSD in our server? I'll quickly try and explain basically how an SSD works and why Trim is important. An SSD drive is arranged into blocks, and these blocks are made up of pages which are normally around 8 kilobytes each. And these pages are made up from groups of the individual flash memory cells of the SSD. Now we can't actually write to an individual cell. The smallest size that can be read or written to is a page. And to do this, the operating system uses the file system, maybe XFS for example. This has its own structure which sits on top of the block system of the drive. So the file system doesn't talk directly to the blocks on the drive, but it talks to the drive controller, which then chooses which blocks on the drive, etc. to actually write the data to. But the controller has no idea what the data is that it's actually writing. It doesn't know what file it corresponds to. Now I'm sure, as most of you already know, when you delete a file on a computer, it doesn't actually erase the file. It just marks that area that it's okay to overwrite as there is no good data needed there. Now the thing is with an SSD is an individual page can't be erased. The whole block must be erased. So what the SSD does is it copies all of the pages in the block that it thinks contains good data elsewhere and then erases that block. And this is where we run into a problem. The drive controller doesn't know what is good data and what isn't. It's just the file system that knows that. So the drive controller on the SSD will copy all of the pages containing data, including ones that have been deleted by the OS. So this is pretty inefficient, right? And to make things worse, the flash cells only have a finite amount of writes that they can do before eventually just wearing out. Now SSDs do last a long time, but there's no point making useless writes. So this is where Trim comes in. It allows the OS to pass messages from the file system to the drive controller, allowing it to mark those deleted files as stale pages, so then it can ignore them and not copy them before erasing the block. So this makes everything more efficient and also means the SSD should last longer. Well, so hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, don't worry about it. Let's just cut to the long and short of it. Use trim on your SSD or the drive performance won't be as good as it could be and the drive just won't last as long. Okay, right. So with that said, let's head across to the Apps tab and install the plugin. Let's do a search for Dynamics. So here are all the Dynamics plugins, and I'll quickly install the eight that I mentioned earlier. Now, if you watch the Community Applications video, you know that after installing a plugin, it goes back to the page where it was before. So it's really easy to install multiple plugins. Okay, good. So that's the plugins installed now. So now let's configure them and we'll start off with Trim. So let's head over to the Settings tab and then go to Scheduler. Now, I know here I don't have a parity disk and that's because this is my test server. I just set up this instance of Unraid to make the plugin videos. 
Anyway, but if we go down to the bottom of the page here, you can see here this is where the SSD trim settings are. And here is where we can set the schedule for trim. You can see here there's hourly, daily, weekly and monthly. And I'm going to choose daily here. Now setting up the time schedule is pretty straightforward. But there's one thing to remember. Choose a time of day that you know your server is normally switched on. Now this is fine for those of us who leave ours on 24-7. But if you're going to set up the sleep plugin, which I'll show you how to later, make sure that your server isn't asleep at the time when you want the trim schedule to run. OK, so next let's configure the Cache Directories plugin. And again, this plugin can be accessed through the settings page. So, what does this plugin do? Well, it caches the directory structure of the shares that you select into the RAM of the server. What this can do is to save the drives being spun up when looking for a file. For example, you have a share that spans a few disks and you want to access a certain file. Well, when the directory is cached, it will only spin up the drive on which the file is located. It doesn't need to spin up all the drives to know this. So as well as saving drives spinning up, it can make it faster too. Now obviously, this is only relevant if you have your drives set to spin down during periods of inactivity. If your drives are set to never spin down, then you don't really need this plugin. And also another thing to remember, the cache directory structure is kept in the RAM. So if you reboot the server, or the server needs that RAM for something else, then the cache is lost and it needs to be rebuilt. But if you have a good amount of RAM in the server, and you're not always rebooting, then this shouldn't be an issue. Right, so obviously the first thing to do is to set the folder caching function to enabled. And everything else that's already filled out here, we need to leave as default. Leave suspend mover process to yes, scan user shares to no, and leave the minimum and maximum interval between folder scans as they are. And we can leave the adaptive scan level depth set to auto. Now this is the part where we choose which folders that we want to exclude or include. There really isn't any point in caching shares that you never or at least rarely go into. So in the excluded folders you can set the shares that you don't want caching. Every other folder is automatically included. And you can see here that I've excluded all of my shares except for data and media. And you can see underneath here, it says included folders. And this is where we set which folders that should be included for caching. But stop, we don't set this if we've used the excluded setting above. Because like I said, anything that is not excluded is by definition included. So now you might be thinking, well what's the point in having the included folder? Well let me show you. Let's just clear out everything from the excluded settings. Now remember that I excluded everything but the media and data shares. Well this way I only have to tick these two. Everything else will be excluded. So depending on your needs, sometimes it's easier to use the included folders and sometimes easier to use the excluded folders. But you use one or the other, you don't use both. OK, so now let's look at the Active Streams plugin. Now there's nothing actually to configure with this plugin, but let's go across and look at it. And we'll find that in Tools. So let's click on Tools, and here we'll see Active Streams. And here it shows what Active Streams are running on our server. Now on this server there aren't any Active Streams at the moment, so I'll just pop across to my other server and let's see what's happening there. Now you can see here these are all the files that are open on my server. You can see the, the IP address 192.168.1.100 has a few photographs open and one video file playing. And this other computer here, 10.10.20.103, is playing an episode of a TV show. And if we click on here onto usernames, we can see the IP addresses that are connected. So it's um, quite a useful plugin to see what's going on on the server. So next, let's move on to the sleep plugin. And for that, we'll find that in settings and then use the utilities and then we'll see sleep settings here. And obviously if we want to use sleep settings then we click on execute function and then we can choose from sleep or shut down. And I'm going to choose sleep. Now next here we can exclude days of the week where we don't want this to happen. So I'm going to put it on a Friday night and a Saturday night. In case I'm watching something on MB and I don't want the server to automatically shut down, I'm going to leave it so it doesn't at the weekends. Now next, excluded hours. So what we put in here is these are all of the hours where we don't want the server to sleep. So this is all the time we want the server powered on. So I'm going to want my server to shut down at midnight and maybe start up at 8am. 
So all of these here, I'm going to leave blank, but I'm going to exclude everything from 8 a.m. right the way through to midnight. So now just during these hours here, the server's going to be awake. Well, I say that, but to be more accurate, it will not go to sleep during these hours. This will not wake a server that's already gone to sleep. To wake up your server, you'll have to use a different way. Most motherboards have this function to wake a computer on a schedule. And another way is to wake it manually using a wake on LAN program on your phone. Anyway, let's carry on with the settings. And this setting here, wait for array inactivity, we can set this so if something's happening on the array, the server won't go to sleep. And what I like to put it on is I like to put on yes, but exclude the cache drive. And next, if we're using unassigned devices outside of the array, we can monitor these as well so if activity is happening on them, it won't shut down. And here, the extra delay after array inactivity, by default it's set for 30. So after 30 minutes of nothing happening on the array, the server will shut down. So long as it isn't during a time where we've set the hours to be excluded. And here we can wait for network inactivity, that can be set to yes or no. So if there's things happening on the network, the server won't shut down. And we can specify which network interface for it to listen on. And here we can set what the idle traffic is. I tend to set mine to medium at 100 kilobytes per second. Now one really useful feature I think is wait for device inactivity. So what I like to do here is I put in the IP address of the device I have in my bedroom that watches MB. So if I'm watching something, it won't shut down. So there I'll put in the IP address of 10.10.20.120. So that's the IP address of the device in my bedroom which I watch MB on. So if that's still turned on, then the server won't go to sleep. But as soon as I turn that off and all these other conditions are met, then the server will go to sleep. Um, all these other things here you can pretty much leave as they are. And these other settings here, basically if the network doesn't work properly after your server's been to sleep, you can try setting these to yes. But for most of us, we'll just leave these as no. Okay, so that's a really useful plugin. It can save a lot of energy if you can put your server to sleep for eight hours a day. So once you've got all the conditions how you want, just click on to apply and then done. Okay, so now let's move on to the system temperature plugin. Hey, wait a minute. What's that camel in the bottom of the corner of the screen? Ah, that's because we need to install Perl first. So let's do that. And we'll do it the easy way by installing the Nerd Pack. So let's go across to the Apps tab and type in Nerd. And here we have the Nerd Pack, so we'll install that. So now let's go back to Settings. And now we have an icon here for Nerd Pack, so let's click onto that. And we need to scroll down and find Perl. Okay, and here it is here. So now we just toggle this switch onto On and then click apply and that will install Perl for us. Okay, so when that's done, just click on to done and then done again. Right, so now let's click onto the system temp icon and then we need to click on the detect button here and that's detected the available driver. So now we just need to click on to save and now load drivers. And now we need to choose which one is our CPU temperature. So click onto the drop down box. Um, I've got a few here. So this one here is my CPU temperature and here's my motherboard and here's my array fan. So once you've selected them just click on to apply and then done and once you've done that you'll find all the temperatures displayed at the bottom of each page on the web UI. Okay so next plugin let's move on to the date and time plugin. Now this one doesn't need any actual configuration, so just click onto it. And now when you choose your time zone, just click onto show map. And it gives you a nice world map. And you just click onto your location and set the time that way. And another nice thing it does is it shows the countries that are in the same time zone as you. So for me in the UK, I can see all these countries here share the same time zone. So once you've set your time zone, just click onto apply and then done. Right, and for the next plug in the System Profiler, we're going to leave the Settings page and head across to Tools. And here down at the bottom, we can see the System Profiler. And again, there's no configuration needed, but what this will do is give us detailed information about our server. You can see everything from the BIOS, to the motherboard, processor, and Ethernet cards in your machine. So again, another useful plugin. Right, and so the last plugin is this system statistics. 
and some of you may have seen that at the top when I installed the plugins earlier that I got this extra tab at the top saying stats so let's click onto that and actually as this is my test server there isn't really a lot to see here you can see I've only got one hard drive so let's go across to my main server and have a look at the system stats there okay so that's better um, the first thing you can see is the hard disks in your system you can see here that I've got three drives that are using 75% of their space so they're getting a bit full but it gives you a good overview of the utilization and percentage of your drives and um, then if you go on to the system stats tab here we can see like a real-time view of our processor load our memory network and storage and we can change this view here from real time to the last day, last two days, last three days, week, and various different time scales. So let's click on to the last day. And you can see that's changed. And when we move the mouse over and place it on various parts of the graph, we get more detailed statistics in the left corner. So that's an overview of the system stats plugin. And that brings us to the end of the video on these, my favorite eight Dynamics plugins. Now there are other Dynamics plugins that you may find useful, so you may want to check them out too. Well, in part three, we're going to be looking at some more must-have plugins, but that video will be in a week or two, as next video I fancy doing something a little different. So guys, I hope you found this video useful enough to hit the like button and to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like what I do and you'd like to support the channel, then any donations are really appreciated, which you can do from the PayPal or Patreon links in the description or channel homepage. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in another video.